Hi, I'm Bob Stern, and along with my co-author, Randy Keller. Hi, I'm Randy Keller. We'd like to discuss some ideas about how to stimulate geoscientific research in the part of the United States that borders the Gulf of Mexico. This is a low-lying region that marks the coastal plain of the Gulf of Mexico. This region will play a big role in the 21st century U.S. economy because of its prolific natural resources, especially oil and gas, and because it will experience more natural disasters in the form of hurricanes, flooding, and sea level rise. In many ways, the future of the United States is tied to the future of this region. The Gulf of Mexico coastal plain covers parts of seven states that encompass one and a half million square kilometers, about 20% of the area of the contiguous United States. This region is experiencing rapid population growth, especially Texas, the second most populous state, and Florida, the third most populous state, and Georgia, the eighth most populous state. This rapidly growing region is also increasingly vulnerable to natural hazards, such as hurricanes, flooding, sea level rise, and even possibly tsunamis. We need to better understand the crustal and lithospheric structure of this region and its tectonic evolution in order to prepare for the future. However, it is not easy to carry out these studies because the crust of this region is mostly buried beneath kilometers of sediment and sedimentary rocks. We need to devise new strategies for geoscientific study of the northern Gulf coastal plain. Such studies of the buried thick sediments and underlying basement of this key region are needed in order to better understand the controls on subsidence and thus mitigate hazards and to understand the subsurface system and better exploit natural resources. Understanding the causes of subsidence in this region is a key focus because subsidence worsens the damage done by hurricanes, floods, and sea level rise. If we better understand the rates and causes of subsidence in this region, we can better prepare for hurricanes, floods, and sea level rise by engineering ways to slow or reverse the sinking. Better understanding substance will require studying the entire sedimentary column and its fluids and the transitional crust and lithosphere and asthenosphere this is built on. We need to better understand the full range of substance mechanisms as well as the structure of the lithosphere and sediments and how these contribute to subsidence. The role of the asthenosphere, mantle plumes, and dynamic topography should also be considered. First, a few words about what we know. The northern Gulf of Mexico, including the coastal plain where people and hazards are, and the continental shelf where the resources are, are onshore and offshore parts of a textbook passive continental margin. This region has one of the thickest accumulations of sediment on Earth. This huge pile of sediments was deposited in the 165 million years after the Gulf of Mexico opened during the breakup of the supercontinent Pangaea. As the small ocean basin opened and new crust formed by seafloor spreading, thick sequences of Jurassic salt were deposited before normal marine sediments began to be deposited in the latest Jurassic and into Cretaceous time. Cenozoic deposition varied from clay and sand-rich deposits west of the Mississippi Delta, shed from the growing mountains in far western Texas New Mexico and Northeast Mexico, to carbonate sediments deposited in clear waters east of the Mississippi. Hydrocarbon deposits are found in the top few kilometers of the sedimentary pile. The deeper two-thirds of the pile is largely unknown. The entire passive margin system needs to be studied in detail in order to better understand subsidence from the asthenosphere to quaternary sediments. A geodetic system using satellite interferometry and GPS is needed in order to monitor subsidence. With this information, we can begin to develop realistic numerical models of subsidence. In order to better understand subsidence, we need to better understand the fluids generated by the sedimentary pile, including the hydrocarbons. We need geophysical data to image the crust 
and lithosphere and choose sites where to conduct more detailed geophysical surveys, drilling and coring. We need to drill as deeply as possible. The deepest continental drilling to date reached 11 kilometers in the Kola Peninsula of Russia, but it may be possible with modern technology to reach 15 or even 20 kilometers to the base of the sedimentary pile and into the transitional crust beneath the Gulf of Mexico coastal plain. We need to sample and study the fluids, metamorphism, and the microbes that exist all the way down as deep as we can drill. This pile of sediments is the world's best natural laboratory for an integrated study of burial metamorphism. As we drill through it, we will encounter a wide range of diagenetic and metamorphic environments as we penetrate down into green schist and maybe even amphibolite facies. We will want to see how the distinctive horizons or zones seen in seismic reflection lines correspond to features observed in the core. This will be the first integrated study of an active site of burial, diagenesis, and metamorphism. The geomicrobiological opportunities alone warrant the effort to image and sample so deeply. We will see the bottom of the biosphere and into Earth's sterile zone. The top five kilometers of the sedimentary pile has a normal geotherm of about 25 degrees centigrade per kilometer. Will this persist all the way to the base of the sediment pile, 10 kilometers below? What kinds of communities live at the margins of life? What are the most extremophilic of the extremophiles? All these aspects must be considered in order to build a robust substance model for the region, with all models required to fit the geodetic results for the regional network. A community effort along the lines of ridge or geoprisms is needed to organize the scientific community. In this effort, AGU can play a leading role. The diverse interdisciplinary community needed to carry out this effort already exists in our union, so it should start here. This work will be expensive. Geophysical experiments and deep drilling are expensive. Geodetic networks and laboratory studies of cores fluids and microbes, and numerical models are not cheap. The financial resources needed to do this cannot come from the National Science Foundation alone. This work will require other partners, including NASA, NOAA, the USGS, and DOE. Partners in the state and local governments will need to be recruited. Even so, the academic government partnership lacks the expertise or resources to do this work and a third leg of support is needed. The U.S. hydrocarbon industry has a big footprint in this region and we need to involve this geoscientific community. One way to do this would be through a new National Science Foundation program encouraging research partnerships with funding from both companies and NSF. Such a program would differ from many industry university consortia and the data and results would not be proprietary, but would be subject to the same rules as any other NSF-funded project. An example of what could be done is the recently announced Stones Mid-Ocean Observatory project. This project is a collaboration between the National Academy of Sciences and Shell and other industry partners to provide $1 million in funding to convert an existing ocean mooring owned by Shell into the first long-term deep ocean observatory in the Gulf of Mexico. This deep ocean observatory will be part of a broader, long-term initiative called Understanding Gulf Ocean System, or UGOS. UGOS is cross-disciplinary, multi-institutional research campaign to better understand the interacting physical, biological, and chemical processes at work in the Gulf of Mexico. Another example of how this might work would be that an industry active source seismic experiment could listen longer than industry needs to image the sediments for use by entity and collect non-proprietary data on crust and lithosphere. Academic geoscientists and students could be funded by NSF to work on the non-proprietary data. Okay, thanks for listening. There's a strong need opportunity and challenge to carry out a systematic 
Integrated Interdisciplinary Study of Substance of the U.S. Gulf of Mexico Coastal Plain. We're sure this effort needs to be undertaken, but we're much less sure how to move this opportunity and challenge forward. This project is likely to take some time to put together, and Randy and I may not be around to see our dream realized. We do know that a very wide range of scientists will be needed to plan and carry out this work, and that AGU is the best place to start discussion. We hope you agree. <laughs>